what is the best camera Sony can come out with next? Maybe some of us can now stop fangirling over the new Sony A9 Mark III that just came out, and I can help you get back to reality. What is the perfect camera now that Sony's made the perfect camera that nobody can afford? What are my thoughts? Do I like some of the technological advancements? Sure I do, of course I do, but we need to get it to a more realistic financial bottom line where we can <laughs> focus more on creating than the technical toys at our dispense. This is not the A9 Mark III with me today. This is an older Sony camera. It's a bridge camera. I still use today. I actually downgraded from the A7R Mark II. <laughs> and then I downgraded to the A6500 from that because that was more than what I needed for that time. Um, as far as video specs, that's what I kind of want to just focus on today is the video side of things. We've had good enough quality for years now. And while I do appreciate some of the advancements this new Sony camera is coming out with, I'm more excited to see if they're going to actually implement them into these more approachable cameras that won't cost you your car. <laughs> um, the A6700 they just came out with, I really am interested in playing with that at some point. I feel like that's maybe the perfect size of sensor and the body is small and lightweight enough and it might just give me most of everything I would want as far as a content creation camera and as a lot of cinematic capabilities as well. That was actually the more exciting thing I thought when I was watching the Sony A9 III announcement is they were talking about these firmware updates that they were gonna implement into at least the A7S III. So what my one other filmmaking friend's been wanting for years and would never go to Sony because they'd never give them Cinema 24 frames per second or DCI certain things like that that I never personally use. It's just not needed. I don't feel like I, I'm a person that also loves 30 frames per second. Uh, most people don't realize 24 frames looks good on film because of the crystals moving and it was their compromise of what motion looks most accurate while saving them money on footage of film because that stuff ain't cheap. Now we're capable, this thing's capable of doing 120 frames per second in HD. It does 4K at 30, which was the standard for a long time. Now it's like every new camera we are demanding, if it doesn't have 4K 60 frames per second with no crop, it's not acceptable. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, yeah, I do enjoy the higher frame rates. I don't really need anything over 120. 240 is kind of nice, but I can live with it at HD. Anyway, I have that. I've had it for years. Um, so what are we really gaining except global shutter? Sure, that's nice. It's nice when you're trying to pan, which is, you know, I've, I've just learned to shoot around it, I guess. I don't pan anymore. I, most of the time I'm on sticks, as you can see. And if I'm hand-holding, I'm not trying to go left and right too fast or too often. Uh, if I do, I'm going to increase the shutter speed, or the, yeah, the shutter and the frame rates to get it a bit more sharp. Um, I actually preferred, and I know, I know they could implement this in a lot of their previous cameras through a firmware update if they wanted to. So I was commenting on their video, I'm like, I love that pre-record feature, that function, where they were showing if you're waiting on this like bird to fly out of a tree, and I, I actually could have just used it on the shot that I got with this camera. I'm gonna show it in this video, because I captured these bald eagles flying out of a tree at 120 frames per second on this old thing that I hit myself in the ear with. Because <laughs> it's heavy. This thing's 
not that light. And especially with all the, uh, I have like a fluid head because I'm, I'm gonna probably shoot video with it here in a little bit. It's not the lightest. You know, I'm getting a good workout today, getting curls in. So the A6700 would maybe be a good upgrade for me. Um, it's gonna give me auto phase detection that this doesn't have, which this thing still for its heyday does contrast detection. And it was still hitting most of my focus when I've been shooting this little film project I've been working on that I've been solo shooting and I have to rely on autofocus. And sometimes I'll mark my spot and do manual, but for the most part, I've been, I've been trying to trust this a little more and it's more trustworthy than I thought. It's just not perfect like the newer ones are. So there's still a little room of improvement there. And I would be gaining 4K 120. I don't care if there's a crop, that doesn't bother me. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Some of the touch, like this doesn't have a touch screen feature. The flip out screen, another thing I've been lacking. That would be the biggest upgrade for me that someone that self shoots is to be able to see what I'm doing and frame up things a lot easier. So that's the, that's the other, other camera I'm kind of interested in right now that Sony's been working on lately. I'm gonna set this down real quick. Uh, what do I actually want from Sony? Now that Sony has made its perfect camera that costs more than a car, a used car, what do we actually want from Sony? I'm about to tell you, cause I'm shooting on it right now and it's a little action camera they came out with years ago. I actually made another video last, maybe it was the beginning of this year or last year, talking about action cameras. And no one really made huge leaps and bounds since this X3000, which has boss stabilization, the only action camera to really utilize optical stabilization. Now I am only shooting in 1080 right now because I wanted to also prove to you guys that you don't need to be chasing 6K and like dynamic range is more important. And I know this camera might lack a little bit because I'm going to switch to the actual RX10 Mark III behind me. That does S-Log. There is a little bit of difference when you're stepping up in Sony cameras. But I am super impressed and shocked by what DJI came out with lately with their little Pocket 3. Sony needs to learn a little bit of what they're doing and put it in this body. This X3000 body is so perfect. I'm gonna actually switch to my phone or maybe even that camera in a second just to show you what I would change with this camera, with the body, what I would add to it to make this even better than it already is. Uh, cause right now I'm only shooting 1080, 30. The 4K is just a little bit, uh, bouncy at times. So this has the active stabilization on top of the boss stabilization. Um, I'll switch, actually I will switch to 4K to show you how bouncy it is with just the optical. All right, now I'm switched over to the 4K 30 frames per second mode on the Sony X3000. I've tested this thing so many times before, but I think I learned I actually prefer 1080 with the active stay bond because it's just a little bit smoother. Now this is usable. Like I'm just going to kind of ninja walk very slowly just to show you. You could, you could get away with this easily. 4K 30, small action camera, you get better resolution, but is it that much better than 1080 with it being a little bit more fluid. Um, I don't know, we're gonna test that out, I guess, again today, because I think it's, you know, this is fine if you just wanna set it on a tripod, walk away, you'll get that much more detail if you wanna punch in. And that's, I say, the only reason I ever shoot 4K is if I wanna punch in a little bit. But if I'm gonna be like actual walking here, like on a hiking trail, this is what you can expect for the normal. This is, I mean, I'm not speed walking, but I'm, this is like my average pace here. 
So if that's too bumpy, now let me switch to 1080 active stage. Now I'm back in 1080, 30. I'm gonna walk the same kind of, this is brisk, but now we're in active mode. Is it more stable? Now that I'm going faster. We'll see, but this is again, the slow ninja walk again with active stabilization. I don't know. I feel like a broken record. I just feel like 1080 is good enough. I wanna, <laughs> just wanted to prove to you, like you don't need to chase 6K, you don't need to chase 120 some frames, 200 some frames. Use what you got and create with it. It's been good enough for years. Like I grew up in the 90s where we filmed on potatoes. Those, the Sony handy cams. Like I've been such a Sony fanboy for years, it's not even funny. Um, but I'm so impressed with like, this thing fits in my pocket. This little, this little tiny action camera and I can capture my world with it. I can go into stores so much easier than I can with like something like that. That's the other pro about these tiny cameras that have such great quality. And now I want to talk about my Frankenstein baby. What is the best camera Sony can come out with next? Let me switch cameras. Thank you.